Hello everybody. With the COVID pandemic sweeping across the globe, there has been a huge focus on wearing masks to avoid the transmission of COVID-19. Now, there are a lot of masks available in the market and there is a lot of confusion as to what is the role of a particular mask and how efficient a particular mask is. So through this video, I just wanted to show you the common masks that are available and what their role is, what their uh, limitations are. So to start off, we'll start with the most common mask that is available, that is the cloth mask. These are masks that people have stitched at home or bought in shops and they are very easily available and they uh, people wash it and reuse it. Now the problem with this mask is that the pore size of this mask is between 80 to 500 microns whereas the cord particle is approximately 90 to 160 nanometer in size. So there is really a huge huge gap between the uh, the size of the particle that you are planning to stop and the pore size of the mask. Then are these masks useful? To some extent yes because they will stop the larger particles of saliva and uh, larger aerosol particles and they will reduce the velocity of the particles that come out of the mouth so that the radius of spread is a little less. Apart from that not much of use because when you tie these masks they don't have any nose clip they don't have any kind of uh, elastic material and a lot of times these are very loosely tied so the gaps on the sides around your nose they make for free passage of air all around so not a very useful mask but if you cannot find anything else probably better than nothing this is the second type of mask which is very commonly available and vendors are making a killing by selling them at very high prices these are called three ply masks but in india most of the masks that are available like uh, these kind of masks are not three ply three ply has three layers this mask has a very thin layer on this side on this side if you tear this you will find that there is nothing inside there's no layer in between filter layer in between they this kind of mask is slightly better than the cloth mask that i showed you before however even their filter efficiency is nothing great and most of the masks that are available in the market right now they don't have a wire uh, in the nose side or a rather a grip which can give you a tight fit and a lot of them are quite loose and not properly fitted so these masks are also of very very limited use uh, in limiting the spread of covid the next mask this is a good quality three ply mask it has three layers this is the outer layer this is the inner layer and in between there is another layer which is uh, quite effective in filtering particles this mask also has this kind of a wire inside so it retains the shape if you look at this if i put it around my face and then press it around my nose this will retain the shape and cause a decent amount of sealing to prevent air from escaping from the sides of the nose these masks are better than the previous two masks and they would limit the spread of the infection outside however they are not very good at uh, saving you or rather protecting you if there is a contaminated environment because these do not have very great filter efficiency now these kind of masks are also available the most common companies 3m but venus and other companies magnus they are also available in the market they have a nose clip with which you can fit it nicely they have elastic bands to hold the mask in place and they offer a reasonably decent seal now in these kind of masks what you should be looking at is what is the rating so n95 is a very generic term that is used basically for uh, measuring dust protection and not exactly virus or uh, any biological particles so look at the ffp rating whether it is ffp 1 2 or 3 the ideally recommended ffp rating is ffp 3 but even ffp 2 gives you almost a 94 percent protection ffp 1 most of the masks available in the market such kind of masks are ffp1 they give you less than 80 percent protection now this particular mask that i am showing you has a valve which allows the expired air that is the air that is breathed out to exit easily now these kind of masks are 
they are good for preventing the particles from coming in but for, if somebody is wearing it and is exhaling his breath with the infected particles is going to come out through these so they are not very safe masks to use this is again an n95 ffp1 mask this is the venus 44 plus this is ffp1 remember again this has the nasal uh, clip metal clip with which you can get a very decent seal and this does not have a expiratory valve so even the filter the air that is breathed out by the person wearing the mask is filtered so these are fairly safe now for a routine for a person who is not working in a hospital or is not uh, going to high risk crowded areas this mask is a fairly decent uh, answer in the sense that it gives you almost 80 percent protection against the particles of uh, covid that may be transmitted through the air but for hospitals and for other high risk areas like pharmacies uh, markets or anywhere where there is a crowd these are not the ideal answers this mask again is a n95 mask now this particular uh, mask does not write there, there's no uh, notation on the mask whether it is a ffp1 or 2 we did some uh, research some of the models are ffp2 some of the models are ffp1 so please do your research and find out what kind of respiratory protection are you being offered okay and make sure when you use these masks there are uh, there are ways to tighten these masks your lower strap and your upper strap once you put on the mask should be tightened so that there is a good seal around your face and there's no area where air is leaking from you can feel the small jet of air leaking from the side of your nose if the uh, nose clip is not properly applied make sure that the seal is good next come the uh, certified n95 ffp2 masks so uh, what we found in the market uh, the ones that were available to us were the 3m8210 and the 3m1860 masks now uh, both of them are ffp2 masks they have a very good uh, protection these elastic bands give you a very tight very snug fit and there is a good uh, uh, i would say cushion here gives you a perfect uh, fit around the nose without any leakage of uh, air so these masks are very good for people working in hospitals or in pharmacies or in uh, other high risk areas in closed environments where there are a lot of people coming in and going these give you up to up to 95 percent protection now the only difference between this 8210 and 1860 is the waterproofing or the splash protection 1860 is resistant to splash whereas 8210 isn't so those uh, so surgeons especially those who want to wear it into ot where there is a risk of a direct aerosol or a fluid jet to the face they should not be wearing this they should be wearing the 1860 mask but for outside opd purpose where you do not expect this kind of a fluid uh, splash this is good enough so the next category is the big boss these are the ffp 3N99 uh, masks, N99P100. These are called the half face respirators, where uh, these are fitted onto the face with the uh, harness and they have interchangeable filters. These filters last quite long and there are different ratings of filters. So 2091 and 2097 uh, 3M are currently what most of us are using because number one, that's what we are getting and they give you a N99 kind of protection. So if you are going to work in a closed environment, then this is the mask to use, especially if you think that uh, in a healthcare setup, you can be uh, exposed to the virus. This mask has an expiratory valve here. Uh, they have a little less effort of breathing than the mask I showed you previously and that is because uh, there is a, a larger area for the air intake and an expiratory valve so it reduces the effort of breathing. Now this is good for uh, uh, use by doctors or by uh, lab workers or people in covid centers who are doing covid testing. This is a very safe mask. 
The previous one which I showed you was the 6200 model of uh, 3M face piece respirator. This is the 7502. Uh, this is what I currently use because uh, the, the filters are the same. The filtration efficiency is the same. Everything is the same except that here the expiratory wall is not in the front. It is below. So as a surgeon, when I am operating, I do not want my breath with uh, an infected particle to fall on my surgical field. So I do not want the expiratory wall here. I have it here. But even those people who have the expiratory valve here no problem you can just cover it with tape or what we do is that earlier what we did was that we put a piece of a plastic uh, to direct the air sideways rather than uh, directly onto the surgical field so these are the masks that we are currently using especially in our OTs they do not obstruct your view any uh, for ophthalmologists when your instrument is coming in front of your eye for example a slit lamp or a microscope or an indirect ophthalmoscope these masks are still good enough to use Two additional things that I would highlight when you are using masks is one for those who want to wear masks for a long time do not keep removing the mask and putting it back on again slipping it onto your neck and then uh, putting it back on and do not keep touching the mask because the mask outer surface is among the most contaminated surfaces and if you keep on removing the mask and putting it on again you are increasing your risk of infection manifold. The second thing is for those of us in healthcare or in any other job where you need to wear the mask continuously for six to eight hours or maybe even longer, I had a small suggestion. What we are using is routine mouthwash, the dental hygiene mouthwash before we put on the mask because when you wear the mask continuously for six to eight hours and uh, you are breathing out into the mask continuously, there is a lot of chance of oral pathogens coating the inner surface of the mask and over time growing and multiplying in that area. So it's just a common sense thing to do that you reduce the oral flora to the extent possible before you put on the mask. Some of the other masks like uh, the Chinese K uh, N95 uh, ones that we tried, they had some holes in stitching. Some of them were not fitting very well. So currently uh, we, we don't use them. We don't recommend them because if there is any breach in the filtration, even the smallest breach, then uh, it's almost as good as wearing nothing at all. Please see this video, uh, use your masks judiciously and uh, decide upon which kind of a work environment you are or what kind of your exposure is and then decide on the best quality of mask that you would like to use. Thank you.